Hello friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA predicted phenotype traits of a Sarmatian and actually their autosomal, you know, ethnicity stuff as well. Uh, this is a Sarmatian from Moldova and this what's super interesting about this individual is that his Y DNA is NY6467. Um, what's interesting about this NY DNA is that it's a very phenogric haplogroup to have. And uh, let's look at, at the map. This is the map, right? So let's look at the map for this haplogroup where it's most common. Um, this will be very interesting to see. Okay, so this haplogroup is actually most common in the Balkans. That's interesting. So uh, it's N, so it does have the same origin as the Finnish Finnogric N1A1. But it seems to be most common in the Balkans actually somehow. Uh, what if we make the intensity a little bit higher for this haplogroup? Very interesting haplogroup. So, so it's common in the Balkans. It's common here. I don't know who is being used as the reference for for this population. Isn't it? Isn't this just Russians? But I, I mean, I'm pretty sure just Russians live here. Russians, Kazakhs, same thing. So I guess there is a group of Russians who have this haplogroup at a pretty high frequency. Uh, it's also found in Turkey. Okay, very interesting stuff. But this is his, uh, this is his Y DNA. His mitochondrial DNA is T2B. So uh, the best mitochondrial DNA matches for him are T2B 34, T2B. Uh, I think generally I would just say T2B because this is the the common denominator for all of these results. And now let's move on to his uh, phenotype, what he looked like, right? So. Uh, this is his predicted eye shape with my eye shape predictor tool. It's predicted to have actually Amerindian eye shape, American Indian. How many SNPs was this prediction done with? Uh, because the number of SNPs really tells you everything you need to know. So this was done with 5, 10, 12 SNPs. So based on these 12 genotypes, on these 12 SNPs, he's predicted to have Amerindian eye shape. Take that at Take that with a grain of salt. For uh, the hair shape prediction, he's supposed to have straight hair, followed by wavy, followed by curly, and no likelihood of kinky hair. And how many SNPs was this calculation done with? This calculation was done with five, nine SNPs. So based on these nine genotypes right here, this individual has straight hair. And for, uh, for the uh, eye color, this is his predicted eye color. What about the whole thing? Let's look at the whole thing. So he's got brown eyes at 41%, followed by hazel eyes, followed by, what is it, followed by green eyes. So the likelihood of green eyes for him is only 9%. It's not a very significant likelihood. Most likely he's got brown or hazel eyes, basically. And he's got brown hair color, 90% likelihood of brown hair. Um, Greek or snub shaped nose, kind of even percentages here. And well, let's see, what, what is there, is there anything interesting about him? He's got heterozygous genotype for BEH2. He does not have BEH3. Uh, he's not genotyped for BEH1 or this variation, which is predictive of BEH1, so we can't really know, but we sort of can know because of this genotype right here. And this is kind of linked. This is a, in a linked region with this and this. So based on the genotype here, we can assume that he does have blue white haplotype 1. And he's also heterozygous for BEH4. Well, if you're heterozygous, f I mean BEH2. If you're heterozygous, wait, yeah, I got lost. Yeah, this is BEH4. So if you're heterozygous for both BEH4 and BEH2, unless there is a dislinkage event where um, they're at the same on the same chromosome, unless there's a dislinkage event where you inherited them together, you most likely will have BEH1 as well. You gotta have BEH1 too. So he, uh, you can, we can make the assumption that this individual does have BEH1, blue eye haplotype 1, based on this genotype and on these two genotypes. Even though on my website, if you look at my website, um, it does not say, it, it says undetermined, right? It's, it's gonna say undetermined, but really, uh, really we do know that he does have BEH1, blue eye haplotype 1. Uh, when it comes to SLC45A2, he's got two draft variants here. And what about SLC2045? Yes, he two derived variants here. So he definitely got a white skin, European skin tone, not, gen not genotype for keto G, which is another very important um, gene for skin color, actually, but he's not genotype for anything here. And um, what about MC1R? Does not have any derived. Oh, he does. So he's got derived variants in MC1R, this, this variation right here, where he's got one derived variant. Uh, it would probably contribute to having uh, ginger or red hair. But because of his genotype in 
he's not going to get uh, a red hair prediction. Why? Because of this genotype right here and this genotype right here. So if you have dark color variants in in this variation of HERC2, you're probably not going to have a prediction for ginger hair with my tools. And we can see there is a high, the, the odds of red hair for him are 0.91 compared to blonde hair 0.14. So he's, what is this, 0.91? That's uh, five or six times more. I think that's... I think that's six times more likely to have red hair than blonde hair. But still, it's a very small percentage. It's a very small um, likelihood. Why? Because of, uh, because of this genotype. Because of his dark genotype in BH2. So, let's move on to his traits. He's got GG in Comte's Valmet variation, meaning val, -val genotype, meaning higher activity of the Comte enzyme warrior genotype, less dopamine. Uh, TT here and MAOA, which actually leads to lower activity of the MAOA enzyme. So these two genotypes are conflicting. Uh, he's got a warrior genotype in Comte, but warrior genotype in MAOA. Higher activity of the Comte enzyme, but less activity of the MAOA enzyme. And both of these enzymes do the same thing. They both break down dopamine. Uh, he does have one no goal learning variant in drd 2s pro frenetine pro variation. And he does not have any, any A1, A1, any A1 alleles in TAC1 variation of DRD2, so normal amount of dopamine D2 receptors, a slightly higher number of dopamine D2 receptors. Does not have long form 5-HTTLPR, so he's also got short form 5-HTTLPR, just like you guys, just like most of you people watching. Uh, mostly everybody has short form 5-HTTLPR. And he's got two sociopath variants for OXTR, so he's a little bit more sociopathic than, uh, than the average person for diabetes does not have type 1 diabetes. For type 1 diabetes, I really only look at this one variation. And for hemochromatosis, does not carry any hemochromatosis variants. For Alzheimer's, no risk alleles for Alzheimer's in APOE, which is the most important gene. These don't really matter all that much, but they do contribute a little bit to the result. Uh, does not does not carry the G allele here, which would prevent myopia, but in his case, it doesn't have it, so he's got slightly higher odds of myopia or nearsightedness. Uh, no micro P. You know what micro P is. I'm not going to spell it out for you. And not a carrier of any albinism mutations, not albino. And for blonde hair and blue eyes panel, we discussed this already. So let's see his polygenic risk scores. For polygenic risk scores, he's got a significantly lower odds of schizophrenia than what's typical for the average person. So he's got five times, he's five times less likely to have schizophrenia than the average Northern European. He's two and a half times more likely to have type 2 diabetes than the average person. And he's a little bit less likely about average in terms of the odds for Alzheimer's. Now let's see his ethnic calculator results. So for the ethnic calculator results, this is what we are getting. Uh, let's copy this and put it into my uh, into my little spreadsheet. Yeah. So with the um, with the calculator results, he's closest to Miria, uh, Russian Iron Age, followed by Corded Ware Baltic, followed by Russian, followed by French. Uh, the Oracle, I made it myself. I just, you know, I was I was populating it yesterday, and it's it's a work in progress. So that's why he's close to like Russians and Ashkenazi at the same time, and he's closer to Russians than to Ashkenazi, and closer to Ashkenazi than to Ukrainian. It can happen this way. Uh, it's because the calculator itself is um, only looking at like 200 SNPs, and I haven't populated it yet. Uh, there's only a couple samples. For example, for Russians, it's only five people. For French, it's only eight people. Uh, French is actually the biggest group, um, the group with the biggest representation with my calculator so far. Uh, with the Oracle, he's getting more or less a mixture of media plus corded wear plus globular amphora plus narva culture. A very interesting result. Uh, now, we're going to take a look at uh, this individual in G25 as well because G25 is a little bit better. Uh, with G25, he's closest to Komi, followed by Russian Lishukonsk, followed by Tajiks, Erzia. Ta 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 Tajiks show up here, so Tajiks are pretty close to this individual as well, uh, but he is closest to Komi. Although the distance to Komi is not much, not much lower than the distance to Tajiks. It's about equal distance to Komi and Tajiks here. Uh, let's see, mixed mode Oracle getting more than a mixture of 38% finish, plus 28% Tajik, plus 18% Darginian, and Dargins are a group of people in the Caucasus, in Dagestan. So this individual seems to be getting more as a mixture of um, Eastern European, Northeastern European, and West Asian. And finally, for the mixed mode oracle with the ancient groups, because we want to see what kind of ancient compositions they have, 
this individual is scoring like this, 79% Sintashta, 13% BMAC and 7% Krasnoyarsk Bronze Age, 7% um, well, what is it? Siberian, right? So this individual is a little bit less BMAC than what's typical for uh, Sarmatians. For Sarmatians, you would typically see like 14 or 15% BMAC, or if, what am I talking about? Like 18% BMAC. You would typically see 18% BMAC for Sarmatians. For Scythians, it would be like 14 or 15. But this individual is scoring only 13% BMAC, so this individual is a little bit less uh, indigenous Central Asian than what's typical for Sarmatians in general. Maybe it's because, maybe the reason he's scoring like this is because he has some additional uh, European hunter-gatherer admixture, which in this model I don't have a European hunter-gatherer source. It's just Sentashta, Parhai, Srubne, and Krasnoyarsk. So I think this could be explained by this individual having some European hunter-gatherer admixture, which pulls him away from the Parhai, from the uh, BMAX source. But this is kind of what he is. Um, a very interesting result. Thanks for watching. You can download this file in 23andMe format. Uh, from link which is in the description of the video and leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. Goodbye